China will next month celebrate the 100th anniversary of the formation of the Chinese Communist Party. In 1921, while large in scale, China was struggling with poverty, territorial disputes, still reeling from decades of foreign interference. Now China holds a very different position in the world, a rising superpower with the world's second largest economy and building a military to match. And under President Xi Jinping has been accused of taking an ever increasing authoritarian turn in pursuit of what he calls the Chinese dream. It now finds itself constantly at odds with the United States and of course Australia. My guest tonight last year compared this relationship to a marriage. But it is no easy task to keep a partnership in good shape. It takes concerted determination and joint efforts to make it thrive. Married couple knows it. <laughs> While a rift between husband and wife hurts one family, a rift between two countries hurts millions. Well, joining me now is the Deputy Head of Mission at the Chinese Embassy, Wang Xining. Minister Wang, it's good of you to join us. Thank you, Stan. Glad to be here. Uh, I wanted to go first of all to the news that we've got out of New Zealand today where Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Jacinda Ardern have released a statement and they very much raise concerns together about several aspects of China, particularly questions of economy, human rights and so on. I wanted to get your response to that joint statement. I don't think uh, we agree with the statement uh, by uh, the two prime ministers. Uh, well, uh, we do care about our own internal affairs not to be uh, interfered in any form by other uh, countries. But on the other hand, we do value the relationship uh, between China and the two countries, Australia and New Zealand. There's a vast potential for the, for the countries uh, to work together to overcome the difficulties posed by COVID-19 and the economic downturn. I think cooperation is still mm. the central theme for today's world. But Minister Wong, there, there were several issues raised here and particularly concerns about China trying to divide Australia and New Zealand. Now, we've seen in the past comments from Chinese Foreign Ministry praising New Zealand for what it sees as its approach to relations with China. Global Times, the Chinese media, has also praised New Zealand. Is this an attempt to try to divide Australia and New Zealand when it comes to China? I think my government and also our media, our commentators, will make judgment on the merit of its own. And it's not for us to decide what China policy it will take on behalf of the Australian government or on behalf of the New Zealand government. But uh, from our part, from our perspective, we do look forward to a cordial, collaborative and uh, uh, mutually beneficial relationship with each country. But that's not, that's not the relationship, Minister Wong, that Australia and China have right now. Right now, Australian politicians can't pick up the phone and speak to their counterparts in Beijing. China has put trade bans on several export goods coming from Australia, cancelled bilateral trade talks, accused Australia of having a Cold War mentality, of being insane as well when it comes to the China relationship. This is the language that is being used right now. How is that cordial and cooperative? Uh... You are right. Uh, there are certain problems, some of them quite serious, between our two governments and between our two countries. And I think uh, the Chinese people are not happy about a series of actions that violate China's legitimate rights, both in terms of business and uh, in terms of politics. Uh, I think I've uh, enunciated uh, very much uh, on ABC and on other media, how to solve the problem. Uh, we hope the Australian side will respect China's sovereignty and territorial integrity and also stop interfering in our internal affairs. Uh, but today I want to say the key uh, to solve our problem uh, will be two folds approach. Mm. The first is be true to the people. The second is be, is be true to the world. because. As far as I believe, if we anchor our foreign policy, particularly uh, China policy on, on, on the part of Australia, on the 
basis of long-term interest of our people, not the sectoral interest or the departmental ambition, even less the personal political ambition of certain uh, uh, political player. What, what, it why is very it not easy in to... Minister Wong, can I just come yeah. in here, though? But why <laughs> is it not in Australia's interests uh, to be able to say that it doesn't want Huawei, for instance, involved in the 5G rollout, that it will bring in laws to protect Australia against foreign interference? Why is it not in Australia's interest to talk about an inquiry into the origins of COVID? Why is it not in Australia's interests to raise questions about what is being described by many countries and human rights activists as well, as a genocide against Uyghur Muslims in China. Uh, on the issue of Huawei, as I said, there's still no evidence that Huawei might constitute a security uh, threat to your national interest. And Huawei has committed to sign no backdoor agreements with every user. And there's a, a lot of countries, a lot of uh, companies who already adopted the equipment of Huawei. And but that's there's no the decision, single... But that, yeah. is the, that is the decision Australia has made. My point to you here is this. When you're talking about a cooperative relationship and when Australia raises questions that it believes is in its interests and China then imposes retaliatory measures such as trade bans, how does that improve the relationship between the two countries? Uh, uh, I didn't finish uh, uh, to comment on your questions because you mentioned the issue of uh, uh, the so-called independent international review over the origin of COVID. Uh, Australia is uh, claimed that we should follow a rule-based system. Uh, as far as we believe, this rule-based system should be uh, centred on United Nations system and should make the uh, UN charters at, at its core and the relevant international law. We have a mechanism, the WHO, to, in, to explore the reason of each epidemic. The purpose is to prevent its occurrence. Why is it necessary to propose another a so-called independent review when Washington is making each uh, and every pressure on Beijing for the course of the epidemic? But so, the, 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 yeah. point here, the point here, Mr Wong, is we can go through these one by one. But the point yeah. here is, overall, in terms of this relationship, when you have significant issues, and Australia raises mm. these issues, that why, is it, why do we then see retaliatory action from China towards Australia? How does that improve Stan, the relationship? That's your interpretation about the trade issues. Uh, uh, there are... 106 uh, anti-dumping and anti-subsidy cases launched by your relevant department uh, uh, from Australian government. We have only four. It is not fair to argue that such investigation would pose retaliatory measures from my government. And uh, as you know, there are several cases, even a, 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 a bid from a dairy company was vetoed by FERB. And in this case, if you, you, you argue that the Chinese side have been retaliatory or e even aggressive, I don't think it's a fair argument. Wait, let, let's go to the question of Uyghurs, Minister Wong. And again, this has been raised today with the Australia and New Zealand statement and questions of human rights. Why won't you allow people to go in there and journalists and independent investigators to go in and have a look at this situation and tell us exactly what is happening here and what has been described by many now as a genocide? It's very disappointing that uh, uh, some Western politician would uh, blindly uh, buy the argument presented by uh, a small number of people with no uh, academic research result, uh, claiming that there's a so-called genocide in, uh, in Xinjiang, which is an absolutely preposterous argument. Uh, how, how is this preposterous when we, when we know that right now human rights groups, uh, UN independent groups as well, have accused you of committing this genocide, accused China of committing this genocide, of up to a million Uyghurs being held in detention in what some have called re-education camps? How is that not an issue that should be open, full and transparent, that we allow investigators in to have a look? Some people are paid to tell lies to international public. And uh, let history decide. History will tell uh, you and your people and the Western public who's on the right side. And uh, over the past 
two or three years, there have been uh, thousands of uh, foreign journalists and diplomats, many of them from Muslim countries, who visited Xinjiang and praised Chinese government policy and uh, measures on Xinjiang to eradicate poverty and to stop terrorism from happening again. Uh, but we do not accept uh, an idea of an investigation on, the, uh, on a false allegation, because that's, uh, again, uh, intimidation and humiliation. China has suffered such intimidation for over 170 years. It will never happen again to th this day. Minister Wong, when you see statements such as that coming from New Zealand and Australia today, in lockstep when mm -hmm. it comes to these concerns about China, when you see other countries as well raising such concerns, when you see things uh, such as, as the Quad Group, Australia, India, Japan and the United States also coming together, is there a sense here that the approach that China is taking is actually backfiring, that it's creating more resistance, more opposition to China from other parts of the world? I think the majority of uh, the uh, countries uh, among international uh, community view China as it is today, and they know China is growing uh, economically, socially, and is extending its assistance to the world in terms of uh, building a health community, uh, in terms of building uh, connectivity uh, in the region and across the world, which will facilitate uh, the better interaction between the people and the business, and in the end will help the, the world to grow. Uh, I don't think uh, a very lopsided judgment of China's role is uh, legitimate and valid. Minister Wong, now that we have seen this this statement today from Australia and New Zealand, uh, can we expect a retaliation from China towards Australia or New Zealand as a result of this of this statement? Stan, it's your word. Retaliation is your word. Uh, we will uh, express our understanding and our uh, approach on the issue of uh, certain statement. But uh, uh, on the issue of diplomacy and foreign relations, we need to uh, do what we have to do in order to make the relationship work. But in terms of that statement today, you say you will release your response. But what is that? How do you see that right now, today, that statement from Australia and New Zealand? The foreign, uh, our foreign ministry's spokesperson already issued a statement yesterday. We are opposed to the allegations in the joint statement. However, as I said, uh, uh, the relationship between China and Australia, the relationship be between China and New Zealand are overally important, and we, the both governments uh, the, uh, should, uh, I mean, between each pair, should work hard to promote the relationship for the benefit of the people and not for a particular sectoral interest or departmental benefit. Minister Wong, there are two Australians at the moment being held on state security charges, Yang Hang Jun and the journalist Chung Lei. Yang Hang Jun is facing trial and the Australian ambassador was barred from attending that trial. Why? And do you agree now that this appears as if it is arbitrary detention? Again, it's uh, a very lopsided interpretation of what happened in the two cases. And uh, China is a country ruled by law, by the Chinese law, and also uh, in a serious observation of international law. Uh, all the cases, whatever, whoever get, got involved, whether it's Australian or other people from other countries, will be dealt with Chinese law and why, in the spirit of international law. Why is the Australian ambassador law. not allowed to be in the courtroom and have access, uh, have, have, have access to Yang Hang John? This is a case uh, that concerns national security and national secret. According to the procedural uh, regulation uh, in, our, in my country, such cases are not open to public hearing. Why is Chung Lei being held without legal representation and not able to have contact with her family? Uh, Chung Lei enjoys all the consular rights that's being uh, guaranteed by the uh, relevant international covenant and the bilateral agreement between China and Australia. I don't agree with uh, your uh, 
uh, evaluation of the situation. Does that mean that when she is presented uh, via over the internet to Australian consular officials, she's also handcuffed? Is that necessary? Uh, personally, I don't know the details. Minister Wong, a further question just on, on Yang Hang Jun as well. We don't know, there is so much we simply don't know about this case, so much that has not been revealed, so much evidence that has not been presented. Who is he alleged to have been spying for? Uh, as a Chinese diplomat in your country, I speak uh, with what I'm offered from uh, my headquarters. Uh, the embassy was not offered much detail because, again, this is a case uh, that concerns national secret and national security. And in the cases that pertains to national security in Australia, I don't think it's transparent, even less transparent than the case you mentioned. But there as, are as, so as an Australian... many allegations, uh, al so many allegations about China's spies and uh, the China's interference into your internal affairs, which has no clear story at all. Even the case of uh, uh, Wang uh, Li Qiang became a fiasco. But when you talk about Yang Hengjun, he is an Australian citizen. So, again, to that question, when we look at, the, at, at what he's being on trial here for, what is it and what, who was he alleged to be spying for? Uh, the, the trial, the uh, uh, judicial procedure is still going on. Uh, we, uh, the, uh, my government will offer a verdict or will offer a statement at the end of the uh, judicial procedure. I don't think it's right for a diplomat to speak uh, on no ground and uh, try to uh, prophesy what the outcome would be. It's a very strict, very uh, systema systematical legal procedure that's been going on. I want to look at another issue that's, that's emerged today, and that is Australia, the, the uh, third child policy. Is this an indication as well that China is becoming an ageing population, that's putting extra stress on the population, and that as China continues to grow, it is, it is facing increasing obstacles to becoming, to realising the China dream, to becoming a fully-fledged middle power, middle income uh, country, rather. What, what is the significance of this shift to a third child policy? Uh, Stan, I think you are uh, right. You understand my country uh, much more profoundly than some of your compatriots. Uh, over the past 40 years, China grew uh, very quickly, not in terms of numbers, GDP, revenue growth, investment, but in terms of how people feel. Because uh, when I was a college student, I, less than 30 years ago, I had to present coupon monthly coupons to buy food and cloth. And everybody knows how abundant uh, provision now the Chinese market is. Um, uh, people feel much assured about their life, about their rights, and about, and about their future. And people uh, have much more freedom, because the freedom comes from uh, wider choices of what they want to eat, where they want to live, where they, who they want to work with and where to travel, and also what music they want to listen and what books they want to read. So this freedom doesn't come for free. It's a result of hard work from my people and the right leadership of the Communist Party of China. But at the same time, uh, the country of this size, of this sophistication, face many, many problems. Uh, aging uh, population mm. is one of them, but we're still facing uh, uncoordinated uh, development between regions and between sectors. And also, uh, there are uh, environmental stress uh, on account of de uh, uh, economic development, although the government are trying very hard to push forward the green development strategy. And it been, has been uh, very fruitful in terms of uh, uh, afforestation and a reduction of uh, uh, carbon consumption uh, uh, per, capita, uh, per GDP per capita. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, but uh, there's no way for China to stop China from growing, uh, uh, if I may ask, answer your question. But, but uh, Minister, Minister Wong, Xi, Xi Jinping talks a lot about a China dream. Yeah. What does that China dream look like? 
well, we hope uh, that in our country, uh, every citizen, every Chinese citizen will be able to be what he or she wants to be and to do what he or she wants to be, uh, wants to do and pursue their personal wishes, uh, of course, under the constitutional and legal framework. At the same time, because we have a long tradition of collectivism, we put much more stress, uh, emphasis on our nation. We help our nation to become more powerful, pres prosperous, and uh, also culturally advanced, and also uh, the country could be green. But, and more importantly, China's dream is not exclusive. China's dream will not come true when the other nations, other countries, other people will not be able to realize their dream. That's why we put forward the idea of Belt and Road Initiative and the idea of a international community so, of shared future. Minister Wong, does that China dream also mean a reunification of Taiwan and, if, if necessary, uh, to quote Xi Jinping, the president himself, if necessary, by force? Well, uh, unification of the motherland is a century-long dream of our people. And it's, <laughs> in cultural terms, it's a heavenly mandate of our nation. Uh, we are a 5,000-long uh, civilization and nation, and we thrived, China thrived, uh, when the country was unified. And uh, Does, that mean, uh, does that mean reunification by force? Because that is what Xi Jinping has said, that is an option that is still open to China? I think no one else than the Chinese people and the Chinese central government love to see peaceful reunification of the motherland. But the Taiwan authorities are trying very hard to push forward Taiwan independence, which is very dangerous, uh, very uh, perilous to, uh, in terms of uh, cross-strait relations. Uh, we cannot rule out other options to keep, uh, to make our country reunified again. And Minister Wong, does that China dream and that rejuvenation of China also mean that the people of Hong Kong do not get to enjoy a one country, two systems, that they don't get to enjoy the democracy that they have enjoyed thus far? Is, is that also part of the China dream, that to crush democracy, as we have seen uh, with the protests in Hong Kong and the, the laws that have been brought in there to stifle just this democratic aspiration? Uh, that's, again, your understanding of the situation in Hong Kong. Of course, there are certain uh, problems uh, in the Hong Kong special administration, uh, but in, in more sense, it's about people's life, whether people could get a good job, could uh, get proper housing and will have uh, proper education and proper uh, social security. That's the issue a responsible government should think about, both on the local level and at the central level. And uh, the Western interpretation of democracy is like one key solving everything. That won't work. Uh, Minister Wong, this seems to be a, a hinge point of history. We have a rising China um, that is on the verge of becoming the biggest economy in the world, increasing its military strength, uh, but also, as we've seen, um, cracking down on dissent inside the country and with worsening relations with countries like Australia. At the same time, we have the United States and emergence of a great power rivalry. What is the future? How, how do we navigate this moment of history in this return of a great power rivalry? of China and the United States, and countries like Australia very much caught in the middle of this? I think uh, some people uh, in some Western countries are not used to see, uh, seeing China's rise and China becoming more prosperous and uh, nominally uh, would become the uh, biggest economy uh, in the world. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't think uh, China has uh, becoming more aggressive because uh, in, domestically, uh, the government and also the Communist Party of China uh, encourage innovation, creativity and fresh ideas because that conforms to the trend of time. Uh, your interpretation about stifling of dissent uh, is a what we saw a, 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 a piece a certain pieces of stories that's been patched up by Western media to portray China as a stifling 
uh, uh, cultural environment. But if you manage to go to China after the COVID, speak with the young people, you would know how free, how liberal the uh, both the cultural and the social environment has become that would encourage people to pursue their own interest and their own ideas. And uh, internationally, uh, as a, again we said, as I said, we look forward to yeah. a international community of mankind for of shared future. There's no way that China dream will be realized with other people's dream stifled or diminished. Mr. Wong, you've been very generous with your time. Um, I appreciate you joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Thank you very much.